Now, we need to renew our minds to be able to grasp the dimension of God's goodness and what he has given us in Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. My message to Africa is a message of transformation. And what is my message of transformation? It's very simple. It's this. When you hear the word transatlantic, it means across the Atlantic. When you hear transnational, it means across nations, isn't it? So when you hear the word transform, trans means across, across form, from one form to another. So there is a butterfly, there is the egg, the caterpillar, sorry, the pupa, and then the butterfly itself. Four distinct forms, isn't it? Now, what a lot of people call transformation is just movement around one form. Eh? They are just moving around as eggs. Eh? Rolling around as eggs. And there's a lot of activity. Never confuse activity for productivity. Never confuse motion with progress. So they are moving around. Is it still sitting down egg, standing up egg, jumping egg, hello, you are still an egg. Transformation is when you move to the next form. Let me explain it. Somebody has been living in a slum all their lives and they live in one room. With due respect, one room, and then they move to two rooms in the slum. You now move to three rooms in the slum, and then you have a party that you have arrived. Honey, you are still in the slum. Transformation is moving out of the slum. Completely. Let me tell you, transformation is, I was so poor that the poor called me poor. You understand? That's me. Wale was so poor. I mean, when poor people look at you and they say, wow, Wale is poor then you know he's really poor. You know, I mean, where I was staying, if you put one hand on the wall like this on one side and stretch your leg, it will touch the wall on the other side. Do you understand? That's where I was. But transformation is where I am today. My bathroom is three times the size of the whole place I used to stay before. Where I was before, nobody had a car. Today, two of my neighbors have helicopters in their gardens. So when they are going to walk in the morning, you hear that, say, hey. <laughs> when I first got there, I said, hey, you know, I'm from Nigeria. I thought it was a generator. I said, hey. <laughs> they have generator. <laughs> and then one day, I'm looking out, and I see the generator, blue and white, begin to leave the ground. I said, hey, Chineke, Mel, my wife, come and see, come and see. Generator is flying. It was a helicopter. Next time you now see another one brown and white. Ta, 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 ta. I say, hey, I tell my wife, baby, worry not. For soon and very soon, we will contribute to the noise pollution of this neighborhood. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Now that's transformation. <laughs> now, where was I? Let me tell you. I was running my business in America. I was doing very well. Had a lot of money. Doing very well. Then I went to Nigeria with a vision that I'm going to transform the land. Hey. When I got there, the land transformed me. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I was through in Nigeria, I had lost over a million dollars. Now, when you lose money on that level, you are successful at losing. You understand? <laughs> I was a successful loser. You know, it was so bad, I could not hold a glass of water with my left and my hand would be shaking like this. My face would be twitching. And I was told that's how, I heard there's a doctor here. I was told that's how you behave when you want to die. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I said, I'm not dying. No. If I now go and die, one mumu now come and marry my wife. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want, I will terrorize him from heaven. Anyway, so, <laughs> you know, now, here I am, I have flown all over the world, first class. Now, I could not afford a bus ticket from Mombasa to Nairobi because, now, when things were so bad, and I was getting so terrible, talk of mentors, and I went to meet my mentor. My mentor, he's a, he's a billionaire. Billionaire. And so I told him, eh, eh, I lost it. He said, get over it. Ah, get over it. 
He said, he now told me his story, how he lost $7 million with a bank in America. <laughs> so, you know the tie that I just said, hey, no more tears. You mean a human being can lose $7 million. USD, not Zimbabwe dollar. <laughs> and he's alive to tell the story. He said, get over it. And that's why you need the right mentors and you need the right people around you. Because there are some people, if you tell them you lose a $1,000, they go, hey! They will die more than you. They will cry more than you. <laughs> over $1,000. $7 million this guy lost. So he told me, $1 million. Get over it. Go and start again. Wow. So I came to Kenya. I went to the coast. I went to Kilifi to recover. You know? Then I, my, my wife... My wife and I were separated. They were in Nigeria. I was here. My, ah, it was a mess. If I had to go to Nairobi, I had to take, I couldn't afford a plane ticket. It was a bus. And not just, you know, even if there were good buses, there are good buses, you know, Coast, Marsh, you know, really cool buses. This one was called Busway. <laughs> you take it at River Road. When that bus turns a bend like this, you think, Lord, I'm coming home. <laughs> And then that bus was so terrible, you know. People bring chickens onto the bus and all that. And then the worst part is when you get to Voy. And then somebody comes, you are sleeping. And then this mumu comes in and he begins to tap you. Jugu Korosh, Jugu Korosh. I want to slap you, you know. I know you're all sophisticated people, you don't know what I'm talking about. And then you now have somebody who has sat down next to you and believes that he has paid for your seat and half of his own and goes like this when you are sleeping. But I learned how to deal with those ones. Just stretch. Oh, by the time you slap them twice, they won't disturb you anymore. Now that is where I'm coming from. I mean, I remember I had to go and preach in a church. And there was somebody sitting in that church that I owed. You know, this lady used to supply groceries to me in the, in, in the coast then. Groceries. And I have not paid her money. I think two or three hundred shillings. So, small money. I mean, when you owe two hundred shillings, then you are really in a successful debtor. You understand? So here I am standing. And I'm saying, God prospers. I cannot be poor. I am blessed. And she's looking at me like, ah, you owe me two hundred shillings now. If you owe me the... <laughs> But then that's another thing. If you, are, if you cannot say you have it before you have it, you will never have it. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? So how did I now come out of that? I realized when I'm sitting in that bus, I was bitter. I was bitter with Nigeria, bitter with busways. And now, did they force me into their bus? No. But I'm bitter with busways, bitter with everybody. Then I realized... This bitterness is not going to help me. So I had to change my thinking. And what did I do? One day I'm sitting down in that bus and I realized, wait a minute, it's an eight hour drive from Mombasa to Nairobi. And those days, you know, and it was also an eight hour flight on Virgin Atlantic, which was, and it's still my favorite airline in the world. Virgin Atlantic to London from Nairobi is eight hours. So I had to have a picture of success. Where are you going? So every time I got into busways, I closed my eyes and imagined I was on Virgin Atlantic. Since it's eight hours. And it worked until you had Jugu Korosh. Jugu. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you what happened. As I continued to do that, my heart was now right. I had forgiven everybody I needed to forgive. I had forgiven myself for being a mumu. And... Guess what? Some guy, a young man called me from the UK, wanted me to come and speak at a leadership event. And they sent me a ticket. And guess what ticket it was? Virgin Atlantic. Upper class. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so, I got on that plane, I realized there's a difference between Virgin Atlantic and busways. You understand? Life was good. And when I got to the UK, so I met another guy who said they wanted me to come and, you know, they wanted to start a leadership institute and they wanted me to run it for them. 
at this time, I'm still recovering. My family is in Nigeria. I'm scattered. I said, I cannot move to the UK. Then they said, anytime you need to come, we'll fund it. And that is how for two years, I was being flown Virgin Atlantic upper class to the UK at least once or twice a month for two years. Virgin Atlantic said I was one of their best customers and had a, a small thing for me on my birthday. Do you think Busways knows the day I was born? <laughs> so that is how that happened. Then as I, as I was doing that, I realized that what I'm seeing, what I was seeing was an output. So I began to change my input. That is very important. Are you hearing me? Very important. And how did I change my input? I went to buy books. Look, let me tell you, and this I am so particular about. A person who does not read has no advantage over the person who cannot read. And if you want to know how well you are doing, from time to time I do the evaluation. You know, I count. How many clothes do I have? How many books do I have? If you have more clothes than books, you are an endangered species. Are you hearing me? Paul the Apostle, is, he, he, even though he had been in prison, he was in prison, he was sending for his books. Daniel said, I, Daniel, understood by the books. Eh? The whole Bible, you hear talk, uh, you know, talk about books, the book of life, the book of remembrance. The, and then you don't understand books here. I went for one uh, lecture. This Harvard professor had written a book in the U.S. and I was invited for the book launch. And um, the place was about this size, big place, bigger than this, full of people. The Harvard professor was a black guy, his wife was black, and then my friend and I, African guys, we, all went, we, we went there. But the place was full of white people. I said, where are my people? Where are my people? I know where my people are. They are buying Fubu, Dolce and Gabbana, Tommy Hilfiger. That's where my people are, flat screens. Because we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Yeah. <laughs> All right? But I had to change my software. And there was one word in every book that I used to buy those days. You know what word it was? Anybody? If you get it, I might just give you a book today. I have so many books there. If you get it, I'll give you a book. No, 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 not from this table, not from this table. Not from this table. No? No? Eh? Have you heard me speak before? Yes, you have. <laughs> yes, you have. Yes or no? Okay, they didn't hear you there. Just hold that thought. No. It's the word... It's the word... Mil ah, you heard him. The word millionaire. I bought the book, The Millionaire Mind by Thomas Stanley, cracking the millionaire code, Robert Allen, inside the millionaire mind, the millionaire next door, the one minute millionaire, every book. Now, of course, people in church now began to ask me, Pastor, that all these books you are reading, they are not written by preachers and Christians. And I said, that is a way of thinking. How many of the books you read in school were written by Christians? And it did not nullify the knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? My job is, look, you buy a, a, a can of Coke. The can may be dented. As long as it is sealed, you are okay. Isn't it? So the vessel that has written that thing may be dented. I'm not bothered about that. Let me take what is inside there. And so I began to do that. My thinking began to change, and I suddenly found myself, and this is the beautiful thing, I have entered into a life of jubilee, where, where I am today is many times better than where I used to be. Is somebody hearing me today? Now, I saw this, Jesus said this, as my father has sent me, so send I you. And when Jesus pronounced jubilee over that assembly that day, they missed it. But I believe God has sent me here today to pronounce jubilee over this assembly. 
Amen. Amen. To pronounce Jubilee. It says in Psalm, in the book of Psalms, it says, the time, it says, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. Psalm 102 verse 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. I'd like us to rise. I want to just pray and declare a word of jubilee over your life.